Hi, this is Don. In our videos and courses, we talk about effortless sleep, effortless mindfulness, and effortless living. And I assume you may be wondering, what does it mean to live without effort, to sleep without effort, to be mindful without effort? Well, in fact, there's a lot of scientific foundation for this. I'm going to de describe some of the scientific research. Don't worry, it's going to be in fairly simple terms. So Jan and I have organized the scientific information in terms of four modes of the brain. Three of them involve control, and the fourth one involves letting go into direct experience, sometimes known as being in the flow or being in the zone. So the first mode is called the default mode, the default state of the brain. So over the last 10, 15 years, neuroscientists have found that when our brain is at rest, it's not focusing on anything in particular, the default mode of the brain um, activates a certain network of, say, I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands or millions of nerves. And the brain at that point is characterized by wandering thoughts. If you're not focused on anything in particular, your mind tends to go all over the place. So the first aspect of this first mode of the brain, default mode, is we call it mind wandering to characterize it as wandering thoughts. The most interesting aspect of this mode is the wandering thoughts tend to be negative. It's focused on things that we, we forgot to do, things we're about to do that we're nervous about, things that we're angry about, things we're upset about. Why is that? Why are we plagued with all this negative mind stuff going on in our brain so much of the time? Scientists estimate 50% of the day our brains in this default mind-wandering mode. Well, if you understand the evolution of our nervous system, it makes total sense. Our nervous system evolved to help us survive. And when we're living in really dangerous physical environments, the jungle, forest, mountain, etc., we need to pay attention to danger, because if we don't, we're likely to be someone's lunch or dinner. Now, most of us are not in physically dangerous environments most of the time. If you're in a dangerous envir environment right now, turn off this video and get yourself to safety. But my guess is that 98% of the time, if you're watching this video, uh, hopefully 100% of the time, if you're watching this video, you're not in danger, okay? But because of our nervous system conditioning, uh, our minds still act like there's dangers. Only the dangers now or someone says something bad about me, Someone put up a video with something bad about me. Um, my video doesn't get enough likes or whatever. That's, that for us becomes a danger. So our brain is triggered all day to be in this mind-wandering mode much of the day. What do we do with that? How do we cope with that? Well, the second mode, Jan and I actually call it control mode. Scientists call it task positive mode, meaning when you're focused on a task, okay, because the mind wandering is so strong, the conditioning is so strong, it usually takes a lot of effort to get your mind focused, to be in control. Now, I'd like to believe that you're effortlessly focusing on what I'm saying, but my guess is your mind may be wandering. You're thinking about the last video you watched, the next video you're going to watch, the work you're putting off to do so you can watch this video. Hopefully you're not putting off doing anything you need to do. Um, your mind may be wandering right now. You may be thinking about what I just said. Oh, wait, come back, right? And it takes a little effort to focus, to control your mind. Well, this little mini battle, this struggle between mind wandering, pulling you away and trying to control, get you back on task. If you start to pay attention, you don't need the science to tell you this. You'll notice this goes on for a great deal of the day. And it gets tiring. So by the end of the day, we switch to a third mode. It actually shows up different parts of the brain become activated. Jan and I simply call it escape mode, right? So you get away from mind wandering, get away from control, kind of find something that's going to absorb my attention so much, I can just turn off my brain and just not think about anything. For many of us, um, that means being watching TV, um, maybe eating too much, and that's fairly innocent. Sometimes it's not so innocent, maybe taking too many drugs, drinking too much, smoking too much, spending too much money, 
and other, you know, possibly not so innocent things. But there's always this kind of effort of struggle, you know, you're, you're trying really hard to find something, often disappointed, you're trying to find something, trying to party, trying to make it work so you don't, so you can escape from that struggle between mind wandering and trying to control. The good news is there's a fourth mode, which, which is relatively effortless, relatively spontaneous, which Jan and I refer to as experiential mode. Now, the great thing about this is, even though we're not always aware of this possibility, is that everyone knows this. Everyone's had some experience with this. Think back to when you were a little kid. When you're really young, like three or four years old. You go outside at night, look up at the sky, and it's so amazing. You're completely effortlessly absorbed in it. You're not thinking, I gotta take a picture, I gotta take a selfie so I can show kids later. No, probably, hopefully not when you're three or four. You're just there. Not trying to control your experience, not trying to fix it, not trying to make an effort to remember it. And throughout our lives, we have moments, very often in nature, you're by the ocean, walking through a beautiful forest, walking along a beautiful river. Um, a lot of times, uh, playing sports, you're playing basketball or football, you're there with a the team, or you're performing uh, music or dance, just listening to music that you love. I often find um, being with someone you feel really, really close to, you care a lot about, and they're just, they may be going through something, they just need you to be there for them. Not to give advice, not to fix them, not to control their lives, just to be totally present. You're experiencing them fully. There's, this is beautiful, but there's one major drawback about all these examples. You're, you're letting go of control and you're being in the moment and full experiential absorption in what's happening depends on the event, it depends on the person, depends on the sport, depends on the place in nature, whatever. Everything that we're teaching in our courses, in all of our videos, are really designed to help you get to the point where you can see it's actually possible to learn to switch modes at will. It takes some time, it takes some effort, may take hours, days, weeks, or even months, but probably if you really pay attention and really make some effort with the practices, you may get it really quickly, a taste of it. It can come really quickly. You know, you can switch into the zone, switch, become more in the flow, become more fully present, let go of the mind wandering, let go of the efforts to control, let go of the need to escape. But it takes some time. Um, but it's amazing because what happens is you learn more and more to be able to switch away from the struggle to try and get to sleep into this effortless falling asleep, into, away from the struggle to try and be mindful, I'm going to be mindful in the present right now, into just effortlessly being present, effortlessly being mindful. And depending on your willingness to really give yourself to these practices, it can extend more and more into, and I'm speaking from personal experience, and many, many people have experienced this. It can extend into more and more areas of your life. This kind of gentle, peaceful, but very, very powerful in the same way, at the same time, peaceful and powerful state of effortlessness. All right, I hope that makes it clear to you. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again soon.